This is a very, very interesting little comment we'll just go through. And I'll just mention that in all of this story, at some point I came across the cosmic microwave background radiation. And it's a, a form of electromagnetic radiation that fills the whole universe, and it fills it evenly. And they say it's this remnant from the Big Bang. But what that says to me is that this is a fabric <coughs> that fills the whole universe that is resonating at 160 gigahertz. So this is a resonant framework by which everything is connected within the whole universe. And we have to sort of get this picture, you know, what is it when it says it's everywhere? What does that really mean? And coming to this, it, it then sort of brought this picture to me about the importance of electromagnetism in our daily reality. Which then leads to the question, which I'll leave you with, what do we do in biodynamics that is not primarily altering the electromagnetic matrix of nature? What action are we taking that isn't doing that? So we'll come back to that. We can discuss that to, uh, later in the afternoon. Okay, so what we can see from this organisation is that it's a, a sphere and that we identify three dimensions within a sphere. And so this picture is worth looking at and I wish we had the time to just be with this picture and identify a couple of things and one is that we go north where's north and we'll go it's up there okay so um, where's how do we identify that well it's where the sun is at midday and we say well that's north and we sort of take that for granted to some degree but in fact when we look at a three-dimensional structure we have this axis here that is north and that the planets and the sun are all moving around a five degree arc around the middle of the solar system plane and so they're on this plane they're actually on the horizontal plane and so when we look at where the sun is at midday we're actually looking at this point called the zenith and and so there's this need to identify this difference between the north, south, east, west pole of a magnetic sphere and this horizontal plane of the zenith which we focus ourselves upon. We focus to the sun. We build our houses to the sun. And one of the things in our culture is that we have a northern hemisphere based culture. And so in the northern hemisphere you face to the south. And so your zenith is to the south. So therefore the reality of the, the zenith and the reality of the North Magnetic Pole are two very, very different realities in the Northern Hemisphere. But so much of our, our context and a lot of the images that I'll present are actually all based to the sun. We are sun worshippers. And, and this is an interesting point. Especially when we come to look at the fact that we are electromagnetic beings and therefore we are orientating to the North. This, this is a point, you know, just a piece of information here. So we look at this uh, process again, look at the internal structure of one of these forms, and on the horizontal plane, they are, this is NASA, these pictures, are identifying this double vortex structure that's taking place. So we can use that. We can use the double vortex structure as a pattern that we can identify things with. And so just to clarify, this is what we've got going on. We've got a, from the bottom and from the top, works to the middle and works out. This is the basis of anthroposophical medicine, that there is this interrelationship between the nerve sense and the metabolic system that is functioning, and that if that polarity is working properly, then this interaction for the circulation and the respiration will stay healthy. And that when we're looking at illness, as you'll see later, this is what we're looking at. What are these activities going on here? So, so this is the basic pattern. That's the archetype for that process. So we come to this picture. 
<coughs> I had an artist draw this back in the 90s. And, and what we identify here, of course, is that we have this axis, primary axis. But one of the other things that when you look at this picture and after a while of questioning, you go, well, what about these bits? These bits here. That we also have these in-between bits. And that we can identify that as these primary axes function, because it's moving, it's dynamic, it's spinning, as they function, the nature of these bits are going to change, aren't they? So we can gather that bit of information. 